My Troy Bolt snowblower doesn't seem to prime. When I try to suck gas all I get is the sound of air. It's less than a year old and there is no gas cutoff. Hello, and thank you for choosing Just Answer. I'll be helping you today and am committed to providing clear and concise answers to your question. What model slash serial Troy built do you have? Two stage Storm 2620. That's from a decorative decal on the side. What I need to identify your unit is the model and serial from the model plate, please. It's about the size of a business card and is on the frame. SN colon 478 SU slash 1008111 B0677. That number came from the tag on the frame of the snow thrower? It doesn't follow the correct format. Did the tag look like this? Sorry 31 A64 Q4711. 1J120 B70549. Thank you. On this one there is a hose that goes from the back of the primer to the carburetor. Is the hose hooked up and in good shape? It looks okay. Can't see any holes, etc. This morning I tried to prime it again, this time I put some tape on the prime bulb to stop air and some gas came through and seemed to leak from somewhere, I also took the line from the primer to the carb and it was not damaged, sorry I was slow getting back as we lost internet connection and the 3 grams is spotty on my mountain. Relist, answer came too late. Greetings, my name is and I am here to help the best I can. My goal is 100% satisfaction. Let's get started. I noticed that you relisted the question. Are you still needing help? Yep. Blower is still not working. You mentioned this morning I tried to prime it again. This time I put some tape on the prime bulb to stop air and some gas came through and seemed to leak from somewhere if the primer bulb is cracked. Then the bulb must be replaced. Usually the cause of the primer bulb cracking is because gas has been left in the engine for a period of more than 30 days, or old gas that is sat for 30 days was put into the gas tank. This gas will have turned and destroys all rubber parts in the carburetor as well as turning to gum and varnish clogging up the carburetor orifices. Most likely, you will need to clean and overhaul the carburetor as well as drain and clean the gas tank. Use new fresh gas at least 89 octane. Discard any gas older than 30 days old even if you tried to use stabilizer. The alcohol in the new fuels wreck havoc with everything. Longer answer coming in a second. Small engines are pretty simple systems, in theory. In order to work your engine needs these things proper compression proper gas, air mixture with good quality fuel. Proper spark spark at correct time proper lubrication, not required to start and run but required for it to run very long. Since it is less than one year old, I would not bother with checking your compression, which must be at least 90 PSI, and 110 is desirable. We can assume this to be okay. I expect you have either a fuel quality or fuel delivery problem. But first, we need to know it has spark. Even if you got it to start and it died, try to start the unit one more time, take the spark plug out, reattach the plug to wire to it and ground it to a head bolt. When you had it out, was it wet or dry? If it is dry, we are 99% sure we are on the right track, 
but we still need to know if you have spark. Turn unit on and either pull rope or engage electric starter. Look for a bright blue spark and see if you hear it. If it has spark, put a teaspoon of gasoline in the plug hole and reinstall the spark plug. If the unit tries to start, but only runs until the gas you put in is gone then we need to look at cleaning the carburetor, especially if the plug was dry when you took it out. You may get lucky and it may start and run. If so, let it. It may clear its throat or you may get some work done right now. Most likely you have a fuel delivery or fuel quality problem. As engines sit or get older, fuel that is left in the carburetor can turn to gum and varnish and cause this and other problems. Also, any gasoline that was left in a gas can for a period of more than 30 days must be discarded because it also has begun to turn to varnish. Today's gasolines contain MTBE and alcohol. Ethanol, they turn to junk and garbage very quickly. Alcohol absorbs water. And they call it oxygenated fuels. It is the oxygen, and the water, that breaks down the organic compounds in the fuel and turns the gas to garbage, gum and varnish. The fuels we had just a few years ago had no alcohol in it and would store for longer periods of time before going stale. Fuel stabilizers do almost nothing to prevent the fuel from going bad with the changes in today's fuels. The whole point of a fuel stabilizer is to form an oily film on the surface of stored gasoline whether in the tank or in a gas can. The idea was to keep oxygen away from the gasoline to prevent breakdown. Since the fuel is already oxygenated, the fuel stabilizer concept is null and void. These fuels start to degrade immediately upon the addition of the ethanol. Do not buy gas from the discount stations. The discount stations get a reduced price on gas because they may be buying fuel that is nearly 30 days old already. You may be getting fuel that's nearly stale right from the pump when buying from a discount station. Purchase your fuel from the well-known stations such as Shell, BP, Sunoco, Philips 66 etc. More than 70% of all of our repairs in our small engine repair business are due to these same issues. You most likely have dirt, gum, varnish dot etc. in your carburetor plugging up the small passageways and jets in the carburetor. The carburetor will need to be cleaned and overhauled as well as the rest of the fuel system. If you plan to do the work yourself, take pictures with your digital camera or at least make a drawing of where all the linkages, gaskets, and component parts go. Correct reassembly is critical. Remove the carburetor from the engine. Remove all of the non-metallic parts since the carburetor cleaner will cause them to be disfigured decompose and plug the carburetor as time goes on. Clean all parts with carburetor cleaner. You will want to soak the non-metallic parts in a cleaner bath. Blow out all the small holes and passageways with compressed air. Use a tiny stiff wire such as is found on the twist tie on a loaf of bread or on a garbage bag to open all tiny passageways found in the carburetor such as in the screw, nut, or jet holding the bowl of the carburetor on, if it has a bowl. Make sure to look for tiny holes in the bottom and side threads of the bowl nut or nozzle and make sure they are clear with the wire. Wash the carburetor cleaner off of the metal parts by washing them in warm, soapy water then rinsing with clean water. Dry all carburetor parts by blowing it off with compressed air. Make sure that all the passageways are blown dry before reassembling, you do not want water back in the carburetor. 
reassemble the carburetor using a new carburetor rebuild kit. Note, do not try to reassemble without using a complete carburetor kit. You will just end up having to do the job again. Find the model, type in serial or code numbers off of the engine and take them to your local dealer to get the carburetor repair kit. Always clean the fuel tank and replace the fuel line when doing this repair or you may have to do it all over again. The inside of the fuel line disintegrates over time and these small pieces of rubber will plug up the carburetor too. Dirt and water from a dirty fuel tank will also plug up the carburetor. If this happens, you will be starting over again from the top. In an emergency such as a blizzard where you cannot get out to buy a carburetor kit until the plows come through, or during an emergency power outage and you need a generator running even if it runs poorly, you might try the following if your carburetor is the type that has a bowl. Sometimes this procedure works, while the carburetor is still mounted to the engine. Pinch the fuel line with a pair of vice grips to stop the fuel from going to the carburetor. Remove the bowl nut, or nozzle from the bottom of the carburetor and let the fuel drain from the bowl. Carefully remove the bowl from the carburetor without letting the needle and seed and float fall out of position. If it does, no big deal, but you will have to reassemble it, which is harder with the carburetor on the unit. Dump all of the gunk out of the bowl and put the bowl back into position. Use a tiny stiff wire such as is found on the twist tie on a loaf of bread or on a garbage bag to open all tiny holes in the screw, bowl nut, or nozzle that was holding the bowl of the carburetor on, if it has a bowl. Make sure to look for tiny holes in the bottom and side threads of the bowl nut or nozzle and make sure they are clear with the wire. Reassemble and see if you got lucky. You may be able to finish the job at hand then clean and overhaul the carburetor correctly when you have more time and a new carburetor overhaul kit. If you don't feel comfortable with these kinds of repairs, or if the carburetor still doesn't work correctly after your attempt, I would suggest sending it to a profession repair shop with a reputation for having friendly, knowledgeable, experienced service technicians. It would be best to take it to someone who is an ultrasonic cleaning machine. This machine uses a very mild carburetor cleaner in concert with ultrasonic vibrations to get the very small passageways clean. This method is very effective even when traditional methods fail. There is a new product that you can try which is guaranteed to work or your money back, for the manufacturer. HTTP colon slash www.bigfuelsolutions.com slash html slash mib.html It is designed to help clean the carburetor without damaging the diaphragms and rubber parts like regular carburetor cleaner. Click on this site and it will tell you all about it. HTTP colon slash www.bigfuelsolutions.com slash html slash mib.html The mechanic in a bottle is not a conventional carburetor cleaner. It actually breaks down the varnish into its molecular components and it completely dissolves. It do not clog up the jets as conventional carburetor cleaners do. Conventional carb cleaners just loosen the varnish and the varnish particles will go into the jets and filters and clog them up. Usually causing much more problems that was originally there. The conventional carb cleaners also will loosen the gunk that is formed in the gas tanks and cause all of that gunk to go through the carburetor as well. The mechanic in a bottle is a completely revolutionary product that will in many cases alleviate the need to tear the carburetor down and rebuild it. Unless there is mechanical wear and tear that would require that parts be replaced. In addition, the special formula actually is designed to soften and restore the rubber parts in the carburetor such as the needle and seats and gaskets. 
mechanic in a bottle is not a cure-all but it can help customer get going in many cases without them having to tear the carburetor apart. If the customer is not mechanically inclined, it might save them a trip to the repair shop. Yes I was very skeptical about this product when I first was introduced to it, but the distributor demonstrated it and we have tried it on many occasions with terrific results. Otherwise you will have to clean and rebuild the carburetor. Please feel free to ask follow-up questions so that we can always arrive at the correct solution. We want you to be 100% satisfied. If you have a home improvement or appliance question and want to chat with an expert now visit justanswer.com slash YTHI.